welcome back gamers to the rules of fun today we are going to be reviewing and going through how to play greater than games laser riders i mean look at it it's a thing of beauty laser riders is a 45 player action racing game which will take about 30 minutes to get through and relies on the entire table as the race surface to set up the game each player decides which racer they are going to be from these vhs looking boxes and takes all of the corresponding pieces in those boxes and sets it up on their side of the table and here's what you will find in the box. You will get your player stand, which has a little slider on it so you can select gears that you'll be racing in. You also have your laser pieces, which are here. The different numbers on the pieces correspond to which gear you are in. The higher gears go further. There are two sets of turns. You have soft turns and hard turns. You will have a neutral prism. Now these prisms will be all over the board and they are the goals. You're gonna be racing to capture these before your opponents. When you do, you replace them with a prism of your color. This is your starting location, which will start somewhere on your side of the board. And you can see three different directions that your racer can begin racing in. And over here is your power hex. Now this is something that contains a special ability that your character has, which you don't use until you've gone through the game a couple of times and you know how it works. At the beginning of a race, you will take your race markers and place them matched up to the starting location. You will go through the game executing various turns and straight lines in order to take hexes. The first player who can convert three hexes to their own color wins the race. Setting up the board is simple. Now basically all you need is as many hexes as there are players in the game. Three for three players, four for four players, and five for five players. All you do is throw these down anywhere on the board that is at least three straight edges away from other hexes on the board. They could be further away, it doesn't matter. Any position is fine as long as all players agree that it's a decent enough setup for them to start playing the game. To start the game, all players will close their eyes and do two things, namely pick a starting location and pick a gear in which to play in. There are gears one to five. Now, how they do this is all players at the start of the game close their eyes and count down from 10. While they are doing this, the players will place a starting location anywhere in arm's reach along the edge of the table and hold up their hand showing the gear that they wish to start in from one to five. When the countdown is finished, players will open their eyes and see the other players starting positions and the gear that they're starting in. Now it's important to note that if two or more players decide to start on the same gear, they stall out. So if more than one player decided to start on gear five like I did, we would both go down to one. This is important because at the start of your turn, you'll be able to elect to go up or down one gear. So if you start at one, it's gonna take you a while to get up to speed again. Once that is all sorted out, the player with the highest gear gets the first and the tiebreaker token, like so. Player then goes in descending order depending on who has the next gear down. For instance, player number two might be in fourth gear, Player number three might be over here in second. As stated, you can go up or down a gear when it is your turn, depending on what you want to do, which means when every player has had a turn and a round is finished, the person with the highest gear, the person who needs to go first, might change every round. This is where the tiebreaker token comes in. The tiebreaker token at the start of every turn passes along clockwise around the table. And if two players have the same gear and it is the player who is physically closest clockwise to the tiebreaker token that goes next. For instance, if the tiebreaker token was over here with player two and myself and player three had the same gear for this round, then clockwise, player number three would be ahead of myself and they would get to go before me for the next round. Once all the players have their start tokens, you can begin with player number one who will do a series of one to three steps during their turn. The first one of which is to either change up a gear, down a gear, or stay in the gear that they are in. Once they have decided on a gear, that player may move. Do this by taking one of the laser tokens that corresponds with the gear that you are in. If you're playing a straight laser token, this is as simple as attaching it to one of the counters already on the board. If you are doing the starting position, then you can choose any of the three, depending on which way you want to go, and play passes to the next player. 
If, however, you are making a turn, you must first take the turn dice and roll it to see if you can roll the gear that you are in or higher. If you do this, you have successfully executed the turn and you may make a turn during your move. If, however, you roll underneath the gear that you are in, then you have failed to do a turn and instead must go straight forward the same number as the gear that you are in. If you roll this dice and land on a wipeout, then you complete the maneuver that you intended to in the first place and place it down where you would otherwise want it. However, you have stalled out and are now in first gear. And when it gets back to your turn, you can go up or down one, but it may take you a while to recover your speed again. If your laser path comes into contact with another player's laser path at any stage during the game, then you have crashed out. First, remove all of your laser counters, including your starting location, from the board. Then, remove all of your opponent's laser counters back to the start of their board, starting with the one that you hit. If this player still has laser counters left, then they may continue starting from that particular location. Otherwise, if you have hit that player's first token, then all of their pieces are removed, including their launch point. If the player has crashed out, then they end their turn like they began the game. They close their eyes and place their starting location and their starting gear onto the board. If you have managed to crash out and take a couple of players out of the game, then both players will need to do this. Players can also crash out if for any reason their laser rider comes into contact with the edge of the table. Once again, all pieces are removed and the player will start again from a location in their next turn. There is one spot on the board where crashes cannot occur and that is over one of the prisms. In a prism, no player can crash into another player. The idea of the game is scoring prisms, and you do this by crossing over a prism from one side to the other and making sure you can see either side of the prism on either side of your laser track. If you manage to do this, then you replace that particular prism with one of your own color. You move this or nudge it up to the point of your laser counter. Why is this important? If two players were going for the same prism and one player captures it, turns it into their own, and shifts it up, then in the next player's turn they are more likely to hit the opponent's laser and crash out rather than cross at a neutral position where they cannot crash. If you manage to cross a hex but you cannot see part of the prism on either side of the hex because you have missed it by just that much, then the hex is not scored and gets nudged out of the way one laser width away from where it was crossed. Now, when this cannot, where this cannot occur is another laser is in the way and moving it will bring it into contact with the other laser, in which case, just move it out from under the laser in a neutral position. A prism does not get nudged if it is considered to be in a locked position. That happens when more than one player is crossing the prism and therefore it stays where it is. The neutral prism is not lost. The player who has taken the point will pick up this Take either stand back from the table or just stand up and close their eyes and basically fling this prism so that it lands somewhere on the table and scoring can continue. Players may also be able to steal opponent's prisms by passing over just like they would in the normal game, although once again this prism is considered locked and will change to the opposing player but will not be nudged. As stated there are a series of soft and hard turns in the boxes for each player. Now, the important thing to note here is that a player can never pre-measure which turn or which straight line they would need before they put it on the board. They have to select their gear, select their turn, make the roll if they need to make one, then they have to put the chosen or roll pointer on the board, whether it is the right one for them or not. This can lead to a lot of close calls and unexpected crashes. Play ends when one player has successfully converted three prisms to their own color. When a player has decided on their gear, completed their move, checked whether or not they have crashed or scored, their turn is over and they flip their token to done. Once all players have had a turn, the tokens are collected up, the gears are checked and the tokens are redistributed with the first players going to the person with the highest gear once again and the tiebreaker shifting one player to the left.
So there you have it, that is how you play Laser Riders. But why should you play this game? Well, if you're anything like me, you just cannot resist the artwork on this box. I mean, look at it, it is brilliant. Buy this game even if you don't like board games or you're never going to play it. It looks so 80s, early 90s that it hurts. Each one of the boxes looks like a little VHS, which is so cool. It's weathered, it's worn. Once I open the box from this game and you see the reflection reflective super 80s style racing tokens and things ah oh, it's just so campy and 80s i love it to pieces the fact that you can't pre-measure or check any of your moves before you declare them and put them down on the table makes for some nail biting wins and near misses and crash into another area it is a lot of fun if you're into old school stuff like snake like tron like looking at these shiny little 80s style badges then this is totally a game for you thank you once again for tuning into the rules of fun this has been laser ride like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and comment if you can think of other games that you would like help with the rules for. Thank you once again and see you in the next video.